if you earn one dollar per second then to make one million dollars will take you about 11 and a half days but to make one billion dollars will take you about 32 years you see it is easy to think of worlds in terms of rich or poor but broadly speaking there are arguably five different levels of worlds and at each level things change very drastically the difference between what a millionaire can do and a billionaire can do is simply staggering. In this video, we'll be exploring what life is like at each of these different world levels and delving into how the ultra rich spend their money, including some of the most extravagant purchases you have ever heard of. But as you're watching this, you realize that one of the biggest changes that happens at each of these world levels is perspective because prices feel relative to how much you earn. So if you compare someone who is earning $40,000 a year with someone earning $400 million a year, it's 10,000 times more, which means a car that costs $300,000 to them is the equivalent of spending $30. A $10 million piece of art feels like $1,000. A $50 million property within a high-class environment feels more like $5,000. So to us, each of those purchases will feel so major, but to a billionaire, it is not even something they really need to think about. And of course, when you are that wealthy, it's not just items and experiences that you can buy, but then we'll get to that shortly. Let's start off with the first level of rich, which is the top 1%. If your income is over $200,000 a year, like the American reality TV star and actress, Courtney Kerr, or Charlie Poppy and Chey Vibes, the Nigerian musicians, you will technically be part of the top 1% of worldwide earners. And so being in the top 1% may not make you feel quite as rich as you would think. Because sure, you can typically afford a nice house and a car, but with those things comes higher costs. And so you probably don't feel very financially secure and you are still likely working a full-time job. Which is why beyond this level, wealth starts to be measured in net worth rather than income because the more wealth you have, the more asset you have and you are probably not making your money from a normal salary. The next level of reach is a net worth of $10 million to $30 million. At this level, your needs are met. You can live a very comfortable life like Ngolo County or Sergio Min. You have a really nice house just like Nicolas Cage, an American actor. You often fly first class internationally. If it's a special location, you might book a $2,000 suit like Tony Braxton. You can afford any healthcare you need like Mike Tyson. And in fact, no emergency financial situation can destroy your life. And yet, you are still not rich in the way that money doesn't matter. You still have to be sensible and careful when it comes to big decisions. And in the banking world, you are still not classified as having an ultra high net worth. Which brings us to our next level a net worth of $30 million to $100 million. At this point, you start playing in the big leagues and most likely you run or have a controlling interest in a very large company. You always stay at five-star hotels like Chris Brown or Bonaboy and you have multiple residences all around the world that you can stay in as well as you take holidays during prime time. For example, going to Monaco for the Grand Prix or Cannes for the film festival like Will Smith and you won't blink an eyelid when the place you are staying costs ten to twenty thousand dollars per night. You have personal assistants, and are starting to have people that others have to talk to to get to you. You can buy anything that normal people think of as tough rich people buy, like you can buy any car you want, the fanciest jewelry, and instead of flying first class, you would fly private jets like David O. Although having said that, you typically charter a flight or own a private jet fractionally through a service like NetJets, instead of buying it outrightly and having to maintain it. But still at this level, another big change that happens is your social cycle. You probably start socializing with governors, senators and community leaders and you are very likely well respected within some very high class circles. Interestingly though, since you are likely surrounded by other ultra wealthy people, you may start to feel you don't have enough. Sure, you might have just bought a new Ferrari but your friend has a limited edition version where only five were ever made. Even at this level, people are still looking above them. Which brings us to our next level of wealth, a hundred million dollars to a billion dollars net worth. 
to be at this level you likely have ownership or control of a business that most of the public have heard of even if they haven't heard of you directly just like Nigeria. at this point you likely socialize with movie stars like tom cruise or Dwayne johnson rock stars like beyonce or justin bieber you can go anywhere you want and always in style you have multiple residences with staff all over the world with elite cars at every residence if it's your team you might have a private island like cristiano ronaldo or rick ross and of course a private yacht to get you there almost any experience you can dream up you can have but this is the key at this level it's not just about buying the fanciest most luxurious items it's about getting the rarest and most exclusive things you possibly can for example you could get a limited edition pen that cost over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and has four thousand eight hundred and ten diamonds inside and only eight are made each year and if you want to go a lot bigger than that many billionaires turn to art and not just rare paintings but things like this dead shark art piece created by damien hearst that sold for 12 million dollars or let's say you like piano like myself well here's the same crystal piano that was used for the beijing olympics that was purchased at a private auction for around 3.2 million dollars you see when you are at this world level your mind is the only real limit to what is available but then we have our final level the 1 billion net worth and above now before we get into what you can do as a billionaire which is honestly insane it is worth noting that the number of billionaires on forbes annual rich list has significantly increased in recent years and there is now around 3194 known billionaires of course it is possible there are more who have generational wealth that simply do a good job of staying very very private but either way, Forbes has estimated these 3,194 billionaires are worth a combined of about $16.4 trillion and therefore they have more wealth between them than the poorest 5 billion people on earth combined. This example really highlights that even within this billionaire category, the difference between 1 billion and the kind of wealth Elon Musk has is insanely vast. So now that we have got a better idea of the scale of a billion dollars, so now let's look at what you can actually do with that. Because essentially you can buy anything and I do mean anything. We are no longer talking about luxurious items and experiences. Firstly, you can buy assets. You can ask your staff to contact almost anyone on the planet and get a call back. It's amazing the level of assets and respect a billion can get you where within an hour you could ask your people to get in touch with someone and they will be able to do it just like Bill Gates and I'm not just talking about contacting celebrities it works the same with powerful people within politics as well especially because the billionaire may be a donor to their political party and so if you're a billionaire you may occasionally meet with the heads of state and have conversations with them which brings us to the second thing a billionaire can buy influence as a billionaire, you have many ways to shape public policy and public debates like Bernard Arnold and this isn't always done in some kind of evil way like lobbying for lower taxes for rich people, although obviously that does happen but the fact is because of your wealth and connections, you can absolutely influence big changes in the world and not just on a political level because another thing you can buy is impact through philanthropy and charity like Johan Rupert. Your money can literally change countless lives. The question is, how do you distribute them? Clean waters for villages, fund new hospitals, try to save a dying species of animal. With money, you can impact almost anything of your choice. But one of the biggest differences with billionaires that is often overlooked is the ability to essentially buy time. You quite literally don't have to wait for anything no lines no sitting around you've got your own private jet so you just show up at the airport whenever you want sit down on the plane and two minutes later you're in the sky and you can go wherever you wish when you arrive a driver will have already been arranged to pick you up and take you wherever you want to go your assistant will have already go to the best table at the restaurant you mentioned wanting to eat at or maybe your assistant arranged for a celebrity chef to come to one of your vacation homes instead at whatever time you choose 
like Jay-Z. Everything you could need is taken care of for you. However, believe it or not, there are some downsides to being this ultra wealthy. Firstly, it is nearly impossible to have normal emotional relationships at this level. It can become increasingly difficult to have friends and family that love you for who you are. They exist, but it's pretty hard to know which ones they are because your world is likely filled with yes sir and yes ma and people looking to take advantage at every opportunity. Your trust and connections with people are undoubtedly weakened. Dating also becomes an odd experience. On the other hand, some of the world's most beautiful and intelligent women are all around you at parties and events. But again, finding someone you have a genuine emotional connection with is a very different story, especially because your time is so valuable that you are always busy and unable to invest in making deep connections with new people. And even if you do find someone, the relationship balance is killed in a strange way when you have essentially unlimited money because no matter whether you pay for everything or whether your partner makes their own money, either way, something about the dynamic feels off. And finally, and most crucially of all, no level of money can give you truly everything because debt is the great equalizer. And losing loved ones and facing your own mortality are problems that no amount of money can solve. The Reddit poster who inspired this video and also Magnet Media who made a video around this topic talks about how he met Sylvester Stallone at a party who had obviously had a very successful career. He said he was such a great guy, had huge levels of wealth and luxury, a smart and beautiful wife and yet he also had a special needs son who died young. In his words, nobody has it all. No. Body. If you are watching this video and feeling poor, I think it is worth rethinking because in this video we have looked at several levels of wealth, but the fact that you are watching this means you are nowhere close to the bottom of the total wealth pyramid. It's easy to look up and feel frustrated that some people have so much more than us, but just look down the wealth pyramid for a moment. If you have internet access to watch this, plus some food in the kitchen, clothes on your back and a roof over your head and a place to sleep, then you are richer than 75% of the world. So what this video really highlights is that rich versus poor is so unreasonable. It's not two groups. There are many different levels and compared to most of the world, you might well be a lot richer than you think. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate you and I will see you on the next video.